Alpha, Black, Zero. Three cool sounding unrelated words that have nothing to do with the content of the actual game. The budget barrel is back. Released in 2004 by Playlogic Games and sporting the useless subtitle of Intrepid Protocol, Alpha Black Zero is a rare beast, crossing sci-fi with a tactical shooter. There have been other games to try this, like LucasArts Republic Commando, but it's still a rare subgenre. ABZ was developed by Dutch company Kaon Games, better known for nothing. Ever. This was their first and evidently last game, which, if you've played it, won't surprise you very much. The box actually does a pretty good job of selling the game. It's what attracted me to it in the first place. The cover is bland, but the inside flap is a bunch of good-looking screenshots and some very high praise coming from internet publications nobody has ever read. A title that no gamer should be without? I swear these blurbs have to have been taken from previews of the game rather than the finished product. And all the red and black is giving me most wanted flashbacks. Ugh. You are the judge, jury, Executioner, just like Judge Dredd. Oh, but wait, you're also the accused. Just like Judge Dredd. The back of the box describes a future where interplanetary space diplomacy has failed and space terrorism has broken out. And they use that Judge Dredd line again. Must have been really proud of it. The features touted on the back are standard boilerplate for the most part, but I love this one. Unique, mature, and gritty universe. I don't know how mature it can be when it's rated T and built on the same engine as Serious Sam, one of the least serious games ever made. At this point, I'm just delaying the inevitable, so let's play some Alpha Black Zero Intrepid Protocol. God, my IQ goes down by five points every time I say that. Adjust your graphic settings all the way to the extreme. This game is from 2004, after all. And, of course, try to memorize the unorthodox controls. When you start a new campaign, you're treated to an incredibly long and boring exposition scene that comes off as authentic as a $6 bill. Your character is in jail, following his team's alleged massacre of some civilians. Yeah, I heard that his team... What are they called again? Alpha Black Zero. Yeah, right. Alpha Black Zero. Oh, nice title drop. I can't blame that guy for forgetting a name as bland as Alpha Black Zero. He plays a space marine with giant ears named Kyle Hardlaw. Hardlaw. Get it? Oh god, I don't get paid enough for this. Wait, I don't get paid for this at all. Shit. After the long scene of talking is another scene of talking where... Uh, Lieutenant Hardlaw is arraigned in court. Riveting stuff. It then flashbacks to the events of the game, presumably as Kyle is relating them to the military tribunal. The flashback lands right in the middle of the obligatory Space Marines in a dropship cutscene. Just when you think you're about to play, you get to the briefing screen. She is an Asian planet that was developed by 2137 as part of the Solgov Ethnic World Development Program. Oh god, so much fucking talking, just shut up! But over the course of 200 years, the residents hadn't managed to establish an industrialized economy. How is this game so goddamn wordy? The mission briefing is just a giant history lesson. Rainbow Six may have been 70% mission planning, but at least the pre-mission stuff was about the mission, instead of this half-assed story you concocted from the notes in the margin of a rejected Asylum Pictures film. Before each mission, you can pick one of the three weapon loadouts, which determines what you and your squad have. And since there's no collecting enemy weapons or changing loadouts mid-mission, you'd better be damn sure before you press accept. The heavy and normal sets give you a generic rifle and pistol, and the stealth set gets you a generic silenced rifle and generic silenced pistol. It also determines what weapons your team get, changing the spread of snipers, machine gunners, and stealth guys. Overall, though, this makes for some poor weapon selection, even though you can theoretically swap between squad mates. I say theoretically because I can't get it to work no matter what I do. I press the buttons, but it doesn't do anything. After all that talking and the pre-mission history lesson, you're dumped right into the first level with no tutorial of any kind. Your only real guidance is a compass marker of your primary objective. On the outdoor levels, it does you no good because you can't go straight to it because of the terrain and there are no waypoints. More often than not, you're jogging slowly in the opposite direction of your objective, trying to find the poorly marked and only viable route through the stage. You don't have to play for very long to realize this game is garbage. A few minutes into the first level and it becomes clear the open environments do not work with the style of play they were going for. Engagement distances are too long and every weapon but the sniper rifle is pathetically inaccurate. Enemies just sit around in groups, not doing anything until you run into them, and then you have a boring shootout where there is no cover or advanced tactics of any kind. The box claims Alpha Black Zero has challenging AI, with enemies that behave like living opponents, but that's an absolute crock. Your teammates are worthless, getting lost or stuck or killed by the littlest things and flat out disobeying the few orders you can give. Tell them to hold fire? Nah. 
Tell them to regroup? Well, if there are enemies nearby, they'll probably decide not to. Tell them to hold position? Suddenly they forgot what stance they were using and stand around like they're looking for their missing brain. The enemies are no better. I assume by living opponents, they mean ability to flee in terror. Some enemies will try to run away, spouting lines I'm pretty sure they stole from Halo. In fact, the enemies in this game remind me a lot of Halo, specifically the Grunts. Whereas in Halo, the Grunts would collapse quickly if they weren't backed up properly by elites, or if they took heavy casualties, the bad guys in ABZ seem to just generate a random number and consult their table of four possible actions. Stand and shoot. Run and shoot. Run away and not shoot. Or my personal favorite, what was I doing again? When the AI forgets what it's doing, you have the perfect opportunity to run up and melee them, which you'll do a lot to save on ammo, a resource that is all too scarce in a game with this many enemies. The first level is a prime example of why bigger isn't better. It's a massive set of ugly valleys and hills, most of which can't be traversed at all, with basically no buildings or variation to break it up. It's also incredibly long. The objective screen shows some handy stats about your characters, which is how I was able to figure out that by the end of the first level, I had traveled nearly 9 kilometers and killed more than one hundred people by myself. Given how many colonists you outright massacre over the course of this game, I'm sure the twist ending is that Hardlaw and his team actually did mass murder the civilians. It's been established that the enemies aren't that dangerous, but they also don't seem that hostile. You can find them sleeping in groups, again much like in Halo, and ambush them by the handful. That is, if your team will stop going cyclic for long enough to sneak up on them. ABZ touts its varied gameplay, saying you can go stealth or assault at will. This is only partly true. Aside from your team having a hard time controlling themselves on the trigger, the stealth options are also pretty limited. There's a visibility meter, and you can stay better hidden by crouching and walking, but the levels are just way too huge to make that a viable option, and the only enemy you can't kill by running forward and shooting is the draconian ammo restrictions. Also, the graphics aren't nearly as good as the screenshots make them look, either. The outdoor environments look awful, even for 2004, which, if you'll remember, is the same year that brought us games like Chrome and Ghost Recon 2. The visual design is similarly atrocious. Black weapons, black armor, the enemies are all space terrorists. The effect used for grenades is somehow even more underwhelming than Shadow Ops. Halo was released in 2001 on the Xbox. This was released in 2004 for the PC. Yes, it's a budget title, so it won't look as good, but, uh... Chrome? That game looked phenomenal, and it only cost 15 bucks. But you know what? Stupid enemies, bad graphics, boring story, and bad weapon selection wouldn't matter if this game somehow managed to be fun. And it just plain isn't. It even picks up a bit after the first shitty level, and you can have a good time with the cornball dialogue. Probably a whole lot of inbreeding going on. It takes an inbred to know one. Maybe you're a colony boy yourself. I mean, you know so much about this stuff, right? Not as much as your mom and pa did, by the looks of you. You all look the goddamn same. After trekking for more than an hour and several kilometers, you reach the home of the Planetary Governor. All right, Mr. Planetary Governor. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Planetary Governor. Jesus, Mr. and Mrs. Governor Sr. must have had a sick sense of humor, or high hopes for their son. Did you know that the previous Planetary Governor, Mr. Torrance, went completely insane here? Oh, you have got to be fucking kidding me. What the fuck is a Shining reference doing in here? The second level, which is actually pretty nice looking thanks to the rain effect, and because it's in the dark, is also a reference. Oh, I'm sorry, that, that should have read ripoff. The second level is also a ripoff, this time of the Whiskey Outpost scene from Starship Troopers. More space terrorists assault your compound and you have to protect the space governor for 30 minutes until the dropships arrive. Enemies flock toward the walls and get mowed down by the turrets. At least that's what I think is happening, since you can't get on the walls and see, you just have to sit around and wait. For 30 minutes! There is no reason for me to go on. This game is a bloated mess. Light on features, heavy on menial gunfights, and tedious story. Maybe you're one of the people who stuck with ABZ long enough for it to actually get good. Maybe the ending is really worth it. Maybe the stupid outdoor levels finally give way to some actually playable tactical shooting. Maybe. But I doubt it. Also, the fucker crashes all the time. 